I've been trying to remember the last time I saw a Time bike, and I think it was probably around 2012. It's been that long. They've always been revered in my mind as being like the absolute pinnacle of technology, but I never really understood why or what benefit that might give. I just knew that I admired them. And, but now, thank you to Time, we've actually got an opportunity to really get close with these fantastic frames and hopefully explain to you guys like what all the big fuss is about. And this is the first time I've really been able to get like this close and really examine the details. Um, and we get the opportunity to ride test. We've got the Time ADHX on ride test at the moment. And we have a new one of these coming that we're building up to test as well. Now, currently in the time range, there are three models, the Alp Duez, which this is, the ADHX, which is the Alp Duez X, which is kind of, we'll get onto that actually. And then we have the Skylon, which I'm pretty sure you might've heard Pambini speak about. In my hand right now then is the Alp Duez frame. And like I say, this is the first time I've seen one like naked, so I could really, really look at it. And I just, it blows my mind. It's probably the best way of describing this. Like, I've seen really high quality frames before from BMC and Look and Pinarello. And then this comes along and it's at another level again, completely. And it's really hard to articulate this in a video, but I'm gonna try my best for you. You see, like this non-drive side dropout, this is of a craftsmanship you're probably familiar with seeing on like Campagnolo crank sets. It is that beautiful forged carbon that is an intricate shape, but bonded into all this absolutely perfectly. Now, it's quite an old school design, seeing that old 4K weave underneath the clear coat. It's something that we sort of first saw when carbon bikes really first hit in the market. And these guys have kept that sort of uh, thing going with this because there's definitely elements on this where you can see that 4K weave, but that's only the outer surface. That only tells a tiny, portion of the story. And I can see why they've done it because even this 4K weave is set up so perfectly like, and it just seamlessly integrates into these beautiful dropouts. I mean, th the clear coat itself is just, you know when something just feels thick and luxurious, um, it's crazy to talk about like a clear coat being like that, but it, it honestly feels impenetrable. Um, it is just, it's just beautiful. The paintwork as well, I have to say, having just been up close and personal with what I think is probably some of the best paintwork in the business, which is sort of things like Cipollini and Pinarello, this is on another level. This is sort of stuff that you would see on a supercar at a motor trade show. I've only ever seen these sort of cars it, at like at shows, but this is what you'd expect under the bright lights. It's like, it's that really deep, luxurious paint that you just don't see on like normal cars. Definitely don't see it on bikes. It's beautiful. Aside from the fact that visually it is stunning and tactile it is stunning as well. Like just running your hand across these shapes, it's, it just feels like the smoothest paint surface I can come across. Um, yeah, it feels like a supercar, it really does. Now, I don't wanna get in too much of the techie details because the website of Time Bicycles is full of it and they have some fantastic YouTube videos that really demonstrate the build quality. I wanted to say it's my first impressions and I think why this is gonna be important because obviously, the big thing about time is that resin transfer molding, a completely different way of making carbon. I don't wanna to get too much into the techie details because if you really, really want to nerd out, go along to the time website and they've made some fantastic videos and PDFs explaining everything. But the big highlight here is the resin transfer molding. You see, they make these completely differently and you can kind of start to see and appreciate what it is that they're doing. First of all, all these areas around the dropouts, these are all just molded, like you would see on a Campagnolo crank set. Like the carbon is all like powdered and then mixed with the resin and then made into these beautiful shapes. And like even the aluminium threads in here are perfect. The dropout areas are just at the smoothest things I've ever felt. 
the brake dismounts look great. But I'm going to take this fork out and let's start having a look on the inside. You might notice as I'm doing this, this has got a Kevlar component to it as well. We'll talk about that in a second. Quick note actually, they actually use the Dada headsets, the DCR system. Um, I quite like this one because the bearings are really common and easy to get hold of. Um, and two, the Dada system is quite compatible with an awful lot of stem combinations as well. So um, it's quite nice that there's, that there's still some level of familiarity in all these frames as well. Like, every bike shop in the world knows where to get data components from. It's not like Canyon and dealing with those weird headsets and stuff. This is super common. As I peer down here, you start to understand how this resin transfer molding kind of works because there's like little bits of waxy residue every now and then. And that is the big clue as to how these are made. You see, unlike normal bikes where you have like two sides of a mold that you take sheets of carbon, a bit like paper mache is the best way to describe it, and you sort of push it into the, the mold, uh, trying to get them all into all the, the, uh, the nooks and crannies. And then you sort of fill it with a, a plastic bag that you inflate, you fold the mold up, inflate those bags, and then you go and put it into an autoclave. This is different, they actually make a wax model of the frame. Um, you know, and that's the great thing about the wax is it's not compressible. Like those airbags that you normally find, this is a non-compressible wax sculpture of your bike made for every single bike. They have to melt it out of the frame afterwards and then they reuse the wax in a mold and make another mold. But once they've got this wax mold, they can then start like stretching the carbon fibers over it. In fact, let me put this back in the stand and show you because the guys from Time have actually supplied me with uh, a few props, which is pretty cool. So what they do differently is rather than having these sheets of carbon that are pre-impregnated with resin, they literally take the raw strands like this and they put it into a big machine that you'd probably normally see making stockings or socks or something. And they can weave these into intricate, like big, long socks which like move and stretch and you can like pliable. Now the benefit of this is that you're not restricted to just one type of carbon fiber. These individual strands can all have like a special magical formula. So they can have, you know, strands of high modulus and uh, you can actually put Dyneema, which they do into this as well and in different parts of the bike as well. So you're not just fine tuning the ride by taking one type of sheet of pre-peg and another type of sheet of pre-peg and like layering them up, you can actually do this, you know, by single strands. So imagine like one long tube of this and your wax sculpture of your frame. And then they literally pull these over the frame, you know, and several layers. I think there's three layers around all the joints and all of different types of setups as well. So again, go and have a look at the website if you're really, really interested. But that's the big, that's the big story really, that rather than having lots of little sheets like paper mache, this is now like one big tube sock pulled over several times, all individually tuned as to how they want the bike to ride and handle. And then they put over a layer of that 4K. So the 4K that you can see on here, that weave, is actually like a final sheet and that's really just there for the cosmetics of it all, really. Just thought to, to shout about, yeah, it really is carbon. Um, because this would probably look a bit messy by the time you've pulled this out. Some of this will be opened up, some will be, be closed in. But um, the nice thing is it'll be like one big continuous because the mold sort of splits and you can pull it around all these joints and make sure that everything is, is covered up. It's a fascinating process. So once we have these socks of carbon pulled over the wax and this 4K then pulled over the top. This then goes back into a mold and then that resin is injected through one side with all the air expelled out of the other side. So the idea is that we almost completely eliminate the possibility of voids because there's no sort of layering up going on. The carbon isn't pre-impregnated and we're actually forcing the air out as we go. So you should get something significantly stronger for the same amount of weight. And they're also introducing that uh, bio-based Dyneema fiber as well. So 
They say that that's as like stronger than steel, but as light as carbon fiber. Now, I'm gonna get into this in the ride review because the ADHX that I've been riding is definitely an experience. But for now, I just wanna talk about the build quality of these frames. Now, the, the next thing you can really, really tell is that all of these surfaces are perfectly smooth. Like, like I think I've experienced well-finished stuff before, but this isn't just like uh, a slightly rough surface. This is almost polished. This surface is so smooth. And you can tell where the, the rest of the mold is. It's definitely, someone has gone in here and really finely finished this. Like this isn't just like um, a little high spot or a high bit of resin or some paint that's been removed and you can still feel like the slightly coarse um, feeling of um, something that's been sanded. This is, this, is almost, this is almost a mirror finish. It is so, it's so smooth. Those edges are so sharp. So you would normally get this sort of a finish on probably something that was steel that had been properly reamed out and then been really finely finished with like probably almost a thousand grit or something to get it that good. I haven't really seen something this smooth since probably like custom made steel bikes that you might get like at the custom bicycle show. You know, those absolute one-off works of art that you might have seen individual frame builders make. That's probably the last time I've seen something that was as nice as that. See, post is exactly the same. That's not just a smooth finish, you know, with no obvious lumps and bumps. That is like a mirror, mirror finish in there. These seat posts are all 27.2 as well. I love the fact that time are just doing things standard, like standard data headset, standard 27.2 uh, seat post, standard 12 mil through axles and flat mounts, etc. The bottom bracket is a BB386 Evo. So that means it's a 46 millimeter aperture and it's 86.5 millimeters wide. Now this is actually a pretty good choice because you've probably heard me talk on the channel before about I prefer in the 46 millimeter hole that you might on, find on PressFit 30. And that's because you can use a 6806 bearing which you'd normally associate with BB30, but you have the advantage of that bearing being inside some cups which then help with any sort of inconsistencies with the, the frame shape and you're not pushing a hard metal bearing against a carbon shell. You've got something else in there to sort of take any sort of damage that might occur. So you're protecting the frame all the time with that. Now, the 86.5 millimeter wide is quite a nice idea because if you just use BB30, which is 68 millimeters wide, you then have to use adapters to sort of space it out to get to things like SRAM dub and Shimano crank sets. This BB386 Evo is a, is a really nice solution actually. Um, the only thing that might not fit is some of the really shorter cranks that you might pull off a Cannondale. Like one concern over the cable routine. Now, time have said electronic gears seem to be the future. That is where everybody is going, but you can fit mechanical as well. It is gonna be a little bit tricky because the cable routine doesn't run on the outside like you're probably familiar with. So. There's actually inside here a, a cable guide, which means that once all the bikes built and finished, that everything's all gonna be very, very hidden. The only real cables that you're going to see are going to be out here that go to the rear derailleur. So I do quite like that because I really like that whole integrated cable look. But if you're a home mechanic, you are gonna need to remove your bottom bracket if you want to replace a gear cable um, because what actually happens is the outer cable runs all the way down to here to this little holster. And then you've got a naked inner cable that will run to here. And there's another grommet that will then take an outer cable out to here. So it's gonna be almost impossible to route that without taking the bottom bracket out. Again, I'm, I'm a mechanic. We've got those tools to hand everywhere. It doesn't bother me in the slightest. Other nice touches I really want to mention. First of all, the flat mount brakes. Um, on the underside, they haven't been faced, but I think I have every faith in that being flat. On the upper side here, they, you can feel the ridge where there's been masked off before they applied the clear coat. Now, I would like it if that was a bit of a bigger area. We've talked about this before, because if you're using an adapter, you, 
these can create little ridges. I don't think it'll be a problem in this case, but it would be nice if that was faced to the point where if I put an adapter plate on it, we still had a completely fat, flat interface. The, the mech hanger, the screw for it attaches really, really high up. And this is like, <laughs> like, I just need to show you this. This is probably the most rigid like mech hanger. There is not even the slightest bit of play in that. <laughs> it's solid. I love it. And underneath this sort of black plastic area you can see here is where you can put the brazon on mount. So they've always think about the future. There's no doubt about it. One by group sets are becoming more popular. I personally really, really rate them. I like them. I know it's not for everybody, but I do like the fact that there's an option of having something there that covers it all up. A quick look at the fork then, and that story continues of that tactile feeling, everything being accurate. But the really obvious thing in this is this steerer tube where you can see these Kevlar strands throughout and you can really see how that sock construction works so well in a structure like this. Now I've been riding that time Alp d'Huez and I've noticed that the torsional stiffness in the fork um, is incredible. Like the bike just goes exactly where I put it and I've got every single faith that there's no flex there. I'm not sure whether that comes from the stiffness here or whether it comes from like torsional stiffness here, but this just feels so far like a really accurate fork. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what difference it makes on the Alp Duez model. But I have to say it is very reassuring to see um, someone really think about the strength and integrity and the accuracy of this really vital part because my God, do we see a lot of failures in this area. Um, this is great. It is so tactile. You just kind of want to stroke it and feel it because I don't think I've ever come across something that's just so, so nice to have in your hands. It's just the more you, the more you like caress it, the more you appreciate someone, how these lines curve and just how smooth everything is. It is, as you can probably tell, it's blowing my mind a little bit. Um, I should probably get on with the rest of the videos in this series. We, um, we're doing some interesting stuff actually because one of the things I really want to talk about is why? Why do you need a frame that is this well finished? What's the benefit? Like, why would you want that as a rider? Um, and I think I know, but I want to try and articulate it to you. And I'm going to try and do this in two ways. One, we're building up one of these for Vic, and we're going to take all the parts off her old bike, which is a pretty much bottom of the range frame. Now we've checked it, we know it's safe, we know it's square, nothing creaks on it or anything like that, but it's a bottom of the range frame, it's fairly heavy. Um, we're gonna put it onto that with all her existing components and we're gonna try and get her feedback on what it's like to ride something like that. So that's someone who's not got the cyclist lingo. You're not gonna hear her talk about compliance and stiffness. Hopefully um, we're gonna hear Vic's very honest opinion about what it's like to just change the frame because all the other components will be exactly the same. And then I've got the ADHX, which is their uh, gravel. <laughs> like, oh, we're going to talk about that so much in that video um, bike. And I've been ride testing it and it's very, very capable gravel bike. And I've definitely enjoyed riding that. And without giving too much away, just want to say it reminds me a lot of riding a steel bike, but half the weight. Um, I'm going to elaborate on all that when I do the full ride review. And then, this is still kind of in the work, so get down in the comments and let us know whether you want to see it or not. We might have the opportunity of building a Skylon for another YouTube channel and hopefully get our hands on and look at the build quality of the Skylon as well. And we might just be able to ride it around the car park and get a feel for what the Skylon feels like as well. So, what do you think? What do you think? If all goes well, we are seriously considering becoming a dealer for time in the UK. I think they really share the same philosophy as us, and that is, you know, invest in the components that really, really make a difference to how your bike rides, that frame, wheels, etc., and custom make everything to your exact specifications. That's really um, our philosophy. And to me, it feels like time is very much a company that's 
experiencing like a phoenix of the flame uh, moment in their history, if you like. The, they've moved away from Rosingall. The time pedal business has been taken by SRAM. The factory is back producing. They're making new models. There's, um, obviously, the Alpe d'Huez is fairly new. There's rumors of a new fluidity coming as well. So it does feel like an exciting chapter in time's history is upon us. Okay, till the next one. Take it easy and get into those comments. I'm looking forward to reading them. Nice.